Hi and welcome to Practical 2.2 Phaser Edition. Dr. Ken here with you. So we're going to be looking at Phaser Edition and we're going to be looking at adding up phases where we've only got resistors in our circuit. We're also going to be looking at uh, Phaser Edition with a resistor and an inductor and finally a third one, a resistor and a capacitor. So again, if you're going to do this prac, don't forget to do your risk assessment, identify the hazards, decide what type of supervision level you'll be required, and the risk class that uh, the hazard falls into, and what control measures you're going to put in place to minimise that risk. So as I was just mentioning, there are going to be three little pracs that make up this one uh, bigger prac and the first is two resistors in series of course with two resistors in series by now you should be starting to understand that when we only have resistors in a circuit the currents and the voltages all stay in phase with each other then we're going to move on to a resistor and an inductor and there's going to be a shift between the resistor and the inductor if it's a pure inductor it'll be 90 degree shift if it's a practical inductor, it's probably going to be somewhere around about 89, maybe 87 degrees. And if we have a resistor and a capacitor in series, basically the shift is going to be at 90 degrees, but in the opposite direction to that of an inductor. So let's get on with our three little pracs. Our first prac is going to look like this. We're going to simply... Uh, take a two resistors and we're going to measure the current in the circuit we're going to use a clip on our meter uh, around here to uh, measure the uh, current we're going to use an ordinary voltmeter and we're going to put two resistors in series I've got a lamp which is when it's running warm is about 80 ohms and a resistor at uh, about 2.2 K um, finally, we've got a 1 ohm resistor in our circuit here, and basically that's a just a current to voltage transducer. If I put uh, 1 amp through 1 ohm, I get 1 volt. So it's a nice convenient way of turning a current into a voltage. That way, this channel 2 on our oscilloscope effectively will measure current and this one will measure the voltage across our series network of resistors. So there's a little explanation of what the circuit itself is and how it works. So <clears throat> here's our circuit setup. There's a fair bit involved here, so I'll get out my pen and explain it to you. Um, here's resistor one. This here, our lamp, is going to be resistor 1. Here on the deck is uh, resistor 2, that's our 2.2K. And over here is our 1 ohm resistor. Going to be our current to voltage, so our I to V. The circuit itself, we can see here, the red wire is simply coming in, looping up through the multimeter. And because the current is so low, I've wound the uh, wire, looped the wire around about 10 times. Simply means I have to divide the display here on the meter by 10. In other words, just move the decimal point one place to the, um, to the left. And we come out of there into our lamp from our lamp in series through here to our 2.2K and then that loops back through our 1 ohm and then the 1 ohm back you can see here. Our voltmeter is simply connected across the supply so here's the voltmeter at the moment connected across the supply. We're going to move that around the supply as you will see. So, our first set of uh, measurements here was simply to 
turn the system on, which we've done. We've got about 27 volts. We're looking at about 10 milliamps or 10 yeah, 10 milliamps is close enough. And our display, our cathode ray tube, well, it's actually not a cathode ray tube, it's a digital oscilloscope. And you can see both waves are crossing over at the zero point at the same time. They're reaching their maximum at the same time and they're reaching their minimum at the same time. So the voltages are in phase with each other. So 27 volts, our voltage across the uh, the lamp, you can see here I've moved the voltmeter leads, they're now across here and we're getting about 2.227 and then finally we move the voltmeter across our 2.2k and we're getting about 27 so if you look carefully, our 27.1 um, plus our 27.22 puts us back at very close to our 27.16. So when we have resistors in a circuit, we can just add up the voltages. So basically these two voltages here added together will equal very close, allowing for a little bit of meter inaccuracy. A voltage total of 26 volts which is what our displays here are telling us and again if we were to measure the time difference there is no time difference between the current and the voltage they are in perfect phase with each other the blue is representing the current through our one ohm resistor and the yellow is measuring the voltage across our network because there's no difference we can say we have a angle of zero degrees everything is remaining in phase so here's the phaser edition of uh, that and I've kind of done it twice the reason I've done it twice is here's the proper phaser diagram the top one is the is how you draw the phaser diagram um, I've drawn them close to each other. You're supposed to draw them on top of each other, but you wouldn't be able to see them very clearly if I did that. So you can see that the 27.2 plus the 0.23 is going to add up to the 27.6. So what I've done down the bottom, on the bottom uh, graph, same, same phases, and I've just done a top-to-tail addition. So I've taken... V2 and I've top to tailed it with V1 and you can see it comes out very close to the same value giving us 27.6 the total so that's the phase of diagram for two resistors in series because all the voltages around the circuit stay in phase But a little reminder, if we haven't explained this before, if you want to determine the uh, phase angle, what we do is we determine the time base of the scope. So the scope might be in uh, 5 milliseconds per division. It might be in 2 milliseconds per division. It just depends on uh, what your scope is set to. Then you measure the difference on the horizontal between the waves in divisions. Uh, this is best done at the zero crossing points and you'll see this as we go on and then you multiply the difference by the time base. So this gives you the time difference and we're going to need that for a little formula down the bottom. Then you measure the period of the voltage wave, that's the total period of the wave. So again from zero crossing to zero crossing for a whole wave and again you simply uh, work the period out by multiplying the number of divisions by the time base and um, then we want to find out what the difference is between the two so you take the difference between the period and the difference sorry the difference between the 
difference and the period divided by a proportion of the difference. So it's taking the difference and we're dividing it by the period. So we end up with a proportion of the difference. We multiply that proportion by 360. That's 360 degrees because that's how many degrees there is in a circle. And this gives the amount of degrees difference rather than time difference. So basically we're working at what the time difference is as a proportion of the period and multiplying it by 360 because a full period represents 360. So our angle difference is equal to the time difference divided by the period which is also time so just it gives us a proportion and we multiply it by 360 because a whole period is 360 and we just want to know what proportion the time difference is of all of that and that gives us the angle. So let's move on to now we have an inductor and a resistor in series and again I'll just change my pointer we're going to have our M have my clip on ammeter measuring the current our multimeter measuring the voltage our one ohm resistor also displaying the current on channel 2 which is the blue channel on my scope and the voltage will be displaying on the yellow the resistor I'm going to use is my uh, my lamp and my inductor is a fluoro light ballast at 1345 millihenries so that's the basic circuit So here's our circuit setup. I'll explain the circuit setup to you so I get my pen turned on. <clears throat> so here's my 24 volts. I'm looping up and through my clip on ammeter and back into the inductor. Then just behind the ammeter. I'm connecting my inductor here in series with my lamp. My lamp back to my 1 ohm resistor and my 1 ohm resistor then back to the supply. So there's my 1 ohm. As I've just mentioned, we're measuring our current supply through here. And I've got my voltmeter, my digital multimeter set on volts, as you can see. And I've got that connected at the moment across the supply. <coughs> we'll, of course, measure that at a few different places. Um, my display here, as I mentioned earlier, the blue phase is the current and the yellow phase is is the voltage and already you should be starting to notice that my zero crossing point for my voltage is very different to my zero crossing point for my current so there is a shift between current and voltage for this particular circuit which is an inductor and a resistor in series so let's move on to the measurements that we took so here's our measurements and we've got about 27.5 volts so we've put that into here we've got uh, about six milliamps in the circuit our voltage across our inductor that's this reading here. You can see I've now moved the leads down here. So that's our reading across there. And then finally, we have our bolts reading across 
our resistor and that's this one here. If you look at the screen again, if I measure here to here, that's the difference. There, that's the difference between the blue wave and the yellow wave. And then if I measure from here to here on the yellow wave, could be the yellow wave or the blue wave, it doesn't matter because they've both got the same period. That distance there is the period. I'll just use a capital P to represent period. So this is an inductor and you'll notice that the voltage is rising before the current. So this peak is coming to its top before the current one. I worked it out at 80 degrees. So at the moment, the voltage I just misspelt my lead. The voltage leads the current in this particular case by 86 degrees which is represented by that gap. So there we have it. You'll also notice that um, if we try to add up our two values 26.9 which is pretty close to 27 added to this would be 20 about 29.1 so if I tried to add these two together um, it would equal 29.1 and of course that is not the voltage across the supply it's this so the answer is why 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 the why is because of this phase shift between voltage and current. So let's do this on a phaser diagram, which we do on the next page. So here's the phaser diagram. Now if I wanted to add up the two voltages now, and I'll just turn my pointer back on, My voltage across the inductor, which is this one here, is at something like about 88 degrees. I just happen to know that's the angle through my inductor. Then we had the angle across the resistor, the resistor's voltage is always in phase. So here it is on the horizontal. And I've just done a top to tail and taken my blue vector down and put it here. So that is still the voltage across R1. And here's my resultant. It's 27.5 which is what our meter was reading but the difference being the meter can't tell us the angle and the angle in here has got to be about I'm estimating about 80 degrees again depending on your equipment you might get a slightly different answer but the phase addition of the blue phase and the green phase is the purple phase so at the moment we're just learning to do the addition and I've used top to tail. I could have also taken the green phaser and parallelogrammed it out of here and got the place where these two cross and project it back to also get the phaser. So this phaser has voltage and it has direction making it a complex quantity and the only way we can add complex quantities at the moment 
is by using a phaser diagram and in this case phaser addition. So our third one is going to be a capacitor and a resistor in series. So let's have a look at uh, this one. Again, we're going to follow the same principles. Instead of putting an ammeter in the circuit, we're just going to use my clip-on ammeter. Going to use my digital voltmeter for the volts. My lamp. And uh, because it's not going to have too much current through it, so it's going to be about 14 ohms. Our capacitor is at two, uh, 10, should say 10 microfarads. And we've got our resistor, of course, measuring our voltage across the one ohm, giving us the current. So channel two, as in all the previous one, gives us current. Channel one is going to give us voltage. So our system setup, let's just quickly work through that. Voltmeter across the supply at the moment, ammeter measuring the current through the circuit, and this time you can see we've now put the capacitor in series with our lamp. So our lamp and our capacitor, and we have our one ohm down here measuring our voltage drop connected to channel 2 on the scope and the voltage to the uh, supply measured on channel 1. So let's look at our three, three readings. The first one we've just got the supply reading the voltage so we've got 27.3 seven six is our 27.76 that's where that comes from I've got to divide by two on here so we've got about eight milliamps flowing on my multimeter I can tell that because I put two loops of wire so I have to halve the display giving me eight milliamps and we can see that um, the voltage across the capacitor is now 26, so that's our reading in here. So we've got 26.81 measuring across the voltage across our capacitor. And then finally, the voltage across our resistor is uh, 6.99, or pretty close to 7, uh, 7 volts. So there's our 7 volts. And again, if I want to add 26 and 7 together here, 26 plus 7. Of course, we can't just do an algebraic sum. So that would put us somewhere around about 14, um, sorry, 34. Somewhere in the order of 34 volts. And we can see that uh, that can't possibly correct, be correct because there's only 27 volts across the supply. So we can't do the simple addition, not possible. If we now um, look at our oscilloscope, and if we look at uh, the two zero crossing points, there's the two cross zero crossing points. I could have used any two, but uh, that's the difference in here. The period from here to here on our big wave and all I did was put the uh, the difference in time divided by the period in time there we go period and I multiplied it by 360 to give us instead of the difference in time giving us the difference in degrees and we find that the capacitor is causing a 90 degrees shift 
between the two. So there you have it. We can't just add the two voltages across the two components because there is a 90 degrees angle difference between them. So now I simply go to the phaser diagram. What's this going to look like? Well, it's going to be similar to the previous one, except in the opposite direction. And here's my voltage across my capacitor, my voltage across my resistor. And I've simply transferred that phaser top to tail up here, done it in slightly different color blue, just so you can see it and that finds that point there. Once I found that point I just project back to the origin and that length, the purple one, if we were to measure it off would come does come to 20.6. So just put my pointer back on. So our result is 20.6 and I estimate that this angle here is about 75 degrees. So there's the full answer. 27.675 degrees and in this case it leads. So there you have it. The phaser diagram for a resistor and an in a capacitor, I should say, in series with each other. So, what can we draw from this? Uh, once a circuit has reactants, you can no longer just add algebraically. And why is that? It's because AC currents and voltages are complex quantities. They have direction and magnitude, and we have to allow for both their direction and their magnitude. And these can only be added using a phaser diagram or complex numbers. But for us, we're going to stick to the geometrical solution, which is phaser diagrams. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, our practical 2.2. It's been kind of three little practicals all tagged together and understand a little bit more about voltages and currents around a reactive circuit that involves capacitors and inductors and resistors.